Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's video lecture and we covering uh, osseous tissue or bone tissue. So let's go ahead and begin. So function of the skeletal system includes uh, your body support. It's facilitate movement. Uh, you need um, actually several systems to work together to allow you to move your external body parts. You need your muscles, you need your bones, and you need nervous system, right? But um, that's why it says facilitates movement. It also protects internal organs. Um, for example, if you look at the uh, cranial cavity and inside cranial cavity, you have a brain. Um, so it's a pretty good protection by your cranial bones. Um, your vertebral column protects your spine. Rib cage protects uh, thoracic organs. Uh, pelvis protects pelvic organ, right? Um, your skeletal system uh, produces blood cells uh, and not only red blood cells, but also white blood cells and platelets, stores and releases minerals and fat. So here you can see our mm, functions again, protection, storage, production of blood cells, releasing a release and store of the uh, minerals, facilitates movement and support the body. Um, Mineral storage, you store mostly calcium and phosphorus. Uh, you can store fat in a yellow bone marrow and in the red bone, bone marrow, um, you produce uh, blood cells. The process of blood cells uh, production is called hematopoiesis. I like this picture over here because they show you the bone that is not that dry and dead looking um, like many bones you would see in your lab. So bone is actually very vascular organ and it show you outer surface and red bone marrow and yellow bone marrow inside the medullary cavity, right? So you store fat in the yellow marrow and hematopoiesis happen in the red marrow. And you can see it's very vascular organ, your bone. <clears throat> Adult skeleton contains of 206 bones, and they can be divided into five shape categories. Um, one is long bones. Those are cylindrical. They're longer than um, it is wide. The bone is longer than it's wide and describes shape, not size. So for example, if you take femur, it's a long bone. If you take humerus, that is um, bone of your um, upper arm or radius and ulna. And you can see those pretty long. But if you take, for example, metacarpal bones or metatarsal bones, they know that they, they know that long, right? But they still individual bones are longer compared to uh, its uh, width, right? So longer than wide. Um, short bones are cube-like, they equal in length, uh, width, and thickness. We will look at some examples. Over here, for example, we will look at some examples. And here you already have some examples of short bones, uh, such as your, um, over here, carpal and tarsal bones. So over here, for example, show you median cuneiform, intermediate lateral, those are short, short bones. Flat bones, they are thin, uh, very often curved. Um, so example uh, would be sternum uh, and actually your ribs. Your ribs are flat bones, they're not long. And um, your clavicle over here is a long bone. Uh, irregular bones, not easy characterized shape, such as your vertebra, for example. And sesamoid bones are small and round, patella would be example, and they form within tendons. Right, so here we have our classification based on um, shape, right? Long bones, short bones, flat, irregular, and sesamoid. And the next, um, slide I give you uh, features, function, and example. 
So if it's long bone, uh, the good function would be leverage that um, your muscles are attached and they move those long bones. Short bones provide stability support while allowing for some motion. Flat uh, points of attachment for muscles, protectors of internal organs, irregular protectors as well. Sesamoid because they form within tendons, they protect tendons from compressive forces. And here's some example. We don't have that many sesamoid bones. So usually the only example we have uh, in our textbooks is patella, irregular vertebra, some facial bones, uh, flat bones um, will be sternum, ribs, a scapula, cranial bones, short carpals and uh, tarsals, and long femur, tibia, fibula, metatarsals, humerus, ulna radius, metacarpals, phalanges, right? So let's look at a gross anatomy of a bone and we're gonna start with the long bone. Um, as I mentioned before, your bones are very vascular organ. So allows um, visualization of all parts uh, if you're looking at a long bone, right? That's why we are using it. You have a lot of blood vessel supply and uh, red bone marrow also can be shown in a long bone. So it's made of um, major parts um, that are diaphysis. So a diaphysis is a shaft of a bone and it's made of compact bone. Now on the, um, at the end of a bone, we have uh, epiphysis. So proximal epiphysis is the one that is closer to your uh, torso to axial part of your body and distal epiphysis away from your uh, axial uh, skeleton or torso of your body. Between epiphysis and diaphysis, you have metaphysis. Um, now, we already said that diaphysis is a shaft made of compact bone, epiphysis, ends of a bone, and it has epiphyseal uh, line if you're adult, it says over here, or epiphyseal plate if you're a child and you, uh, your bones are still growing. Inside the diaphysis, we will have medullary cavity. And when we adult, um, most of those cavities are filled with yellow bone marrow. When we were young, we will have red bone marrow um, also here, but then it's replaced by yellow bone marrow. And this is for storage of fat. Um, now the bone is covered by a periosteum and we will um, look what, you know, a structure of periosteum in our next slide. And the medullary cavity is covered by endosteum. At the end of bone, you will find articular cartilage. Um, you will find a spongy bone in a um, epiphysis. Right, so that represents spongy bone and in a metaphysis. Now, what is periosteum and endosteum? Now, periosteum and endosteum are covering of bone, right? Uh, periosteum is outer covering. It contains blood vessels, uh, lymph vessels, nerves, and it's an attachment point um, because your muscles will be attached to periosteum of the bone. Now, periosteum itself has two layers. It's a fibrous layer, the outermost layer, and cellular layer that is inner layer. Um, and endosteum, so if you look at this bone over here, long bone, now outer surface is covered by periosteum. And again, periosteum has two parts. And inside you will have spongy bone. You will have this, what we call trabeculae. And the cavity inside is called medullary cavity. So those trabecular and this medullary cavity covered by endosteum. And it's incomplete cellular layer containing uh, different cells, including osteoblast, osteogenic cells, osteoclast. Um, so you can see um, those are cells of endosteum. And this big cell is osteoclast that uh, dissolve your bone. Um, this is osteogenic cell that um, is a stem cell, uh, undifferentiated, that can um, 
differentiate into different cells, uh, cells like uh, it will differentiate, I'm sorry, into osteoblast as it's shown over here and osteoblast will deposit osteoid. <clears throat> right, and this is how your bones getting uh, thicker. So anyway, periosteum and, uh, and endosteum are covering of uh, bones, is the outer covering or inner covering. Now we also have flat bones and um, a flat bone, it's like a sandwich. We have um, compact bone, two compact bone layers and spongy bone in between. And spongy bone has this French name, diploe. That's a flat bone. So the flat bones, uh, we already mentioned, those are bones of your skull, your sternum, your ribs. So they will have um, this structure shown on, on the diagram. Um, now, when we learn bones, it's not just enough to learn individual bones. We will learn the markings of the bones. Markings are important because uh, markings tell us, um, you know, what's going on with this part of a bone, right? If, if it makes sense. For example, if we have, um, uh, let's say, if we have, uh, what do you choose? Uh, foramen, right? If you have foramen of a bone, it's a hole. And through this hole, we might have very important blood vessels and nerves uh, you know, that pass through this uh, hole. So you need to know where this foramen is located because that will allow you to find the location of important blood vessels, right? Or nerves. Uh, we, we might have um, spine or processes uh, or crest. And um, those marks will show you where muscles are attached to bones, where two bones articulate with one another. Or if, for example, we have head and a faucet, right? Uh, the head of one bone and the faucet of another can form, um, you know, a joint, right? And so on. Now, uh, when you when you study bones, um, return back to this table, and it will help you um, to understand what all of those markings mean. Uh, so here's just selected uh, bone markings. For example, uh, if you have a femur um, bone, we have a head of the femur, then we have neck of femur, uh, we have um, a faucet, and this is uh, where femur will articulate, articulates with uh, tibia. We will have some tubercles um, where muscles will uh, be attached. So that's a humerus bone. It has uh, tubercles, and um, again, we have uh, attachment of muscles. We have sulcus, that may, tendon will go through this sulcus. Uh, tuberosity, like uh, radial tuberosity, for example, or we will have um, if a tuberosity of humerus. So again, that's attachment of muscles, fossa. Um, uh, we have example of crest and the pelvic bone. Uh, we have canals and fissures and foramen, and those are uh, passages through the bone where, again, we have blood vessels and nerves uh, passing through. Okay, so now let's look at composition of bone. Uh, I want to remind you that bone is, um, so we have organ. If, if you're looking at individual bone, for example, uh, femur or humerus, that's an organ of your skeletal system. And, but those organs are made of osseous tissue. We call it bone tissue. Sometimes we just call it a bone. But osseous tissue is um, one of the type of connective tissue and it's supporting connective tissue. And if you remember, um, all tissues, of course, made of cells and connective tissue has lots of extracellular stuff between cells that we call extracellular matrix, right? So, um, so we will look at organic and inorganic composition of bone. Now, organic part will include cells uh, and um, we have several cells like osteogenic cells, osteoblast, osteoclast, osteocytes. 
Then we have osteoid. Osteoid is secreted by osteoblast. It's organic matrix. Uh, and it's made of ground substance, proteoglycans and glycoproteins and collagen fibers. So those are organic molecules, right? That make this uh, organic part of the matrix and cells. So now what is this organic composition of bone? Cells and osteoid, right? And um, several, cell, several types of cells and uh, osteoid will include organic molecules such as collagen, that is organic protein, right, the proteoglycans, glycoproteins. And uh, organic part of a bone provide tensile strength and flexibility. But we have inorganic part of the bone, and this, those are mineral salts. About 65% of bone by mass, mostly calcium phosphate crystals. And the name for this crystal is hydroxyapatites. And inorganic part of matrix responsible for hardness and resistance to compression. So here we have this perfect combination of organic and inorganic um, part of a bone. Now, without, uh, without minerals, bones would be too flexible. And without uh, organic part of collagen, bones would be too fragile. So we have this collagen and mineral components that are responsible for major functional characteristic of the bone. And it's a resistance to compression and at the same time, tensile uh, strength and flexibility of your bones. Um, also, right, so now let's look at the cells. So where are we at? Organic composition cells, right? So here we are in bone cells. Relatively few cells in a matrix of collagen fibers and hydroxyapatite. Um, now let's look at those uh, cells that um, found within your bones, osteoblast. Those form new bone found in growing portion of a bone, and, but they do not divide. Now here are osteoblast cells that form bone matrix. So osteoblasts, they secrete that osteoid. Um, so when osteoblasts secrete osteoid, uh, they will get surrounded by osteoid and then it's mineralized, it, you know, calcifies, mineralized. And cells, osteoblasts get trapped within the matrix. So when they're surrounding by matrix, they became osteocytes. Those are primary cell of mature bone. They located in, in lacuna. Now lacuna are um, spaces um, surrounding or like pockets. And there is fluid in a lacuna and fluids must surround bones, otherwise bones will die, right? Uh, because osteocyte will be surrounded by hard matrix, it would be impossible for the cell to survive if it's not inside lacuna. Now, the job of osteocytes it is to maintain mineral concentration, also no division. Now, if these cells cannot divide, these cells cannot divide, we need some that care, right? So here we have our osteogenic cells. They are undifferentiated and they can divide. They mitotic active. They found in the deep layers of periosteum and the bone marrow. They differentiate into osteoblasts, so they will divide. They differentiate into osteoblasts. Osteoblasts start um, depositing uh, osteoid and become osteocytes. But not only we need to build a new uh, bone, so, uh, so uh, osteoblasts are going to build a new matrix. Sometimes we need to resorb the matrix and we have osteoclast to do it. Now, osteoclasts are large cells, they are multinucleated and they secrete enzymes that will dissolve uh, the bone 
resorb the bone. And why do we need to uh, resorb your bone or break down your bone? Well, there are several reasons uh, for remodeling process. When your bones are growing um, longer, uh, you wanna remodel them so they still keep the same shape. And also when you need extra uh, calcium or phosphorus in your bloodstream, you can resorb your bone and release calcium and phosphorus from the bone matrix to your blood, right? So again, we have uh, osteogenic cells, osteoblast, osteocyte, and osteoclast. Now, two types of bone exist, uh, compact bone and spongy. Uh, compact, stronger of the two bone types found under periosteum, found in diaphysis of, of um, bones, a, of long bones, and function is support and protection. Um, so over here, you can see, so we have a long bone, right? And we're looking at the shaft or uh, diaphysis. So here's a little piece of it. And um, the most outer layer or surface is actually our periosteum. So here we have uh, periosteum, right? Uh, remember periosteum has two layers, fibrous and cellular. Now periosteum is attached to a bone through these fibers called perforating fibers. So those are collagen fibers that keep it um, enhanced to the bone. And then we have all this part over here that is actually compact bone. And it disappears, compact bone here. And this bone um, deeper to compound is spongy bone. Now the compact bone is organized in the structural units called osteon. Now you see this um, circles over here, this one and this one, those are osteons. Now, um, if we look at one individual osteon, you see layers, you see this layer and this layer of the matrix. Those layers um, are called uh, lamellae. So you see this, this is one lamella, this is another lamella, and this is another lamella. And because they're so circular, those lamellae is called concentric lamellae. Now, what, so what is lamella? Lamella is a layer of bone matrix, right? And uh, inside that make osteon. Inside osteon, you will find canal, uh, called central canal. So here, part of the central canal, and you see it's going all through the uh, bone. Inside the central canal, you will find blood vessels and nerves. Now we have other uh, canals called perforating canals that are perpendicular to central canal. Because you have the um, uh, nutri uh, nutrient uh, artery that you know, penetrates this periosteum and then it's branches into smaller blood vessels that move through perforating canals to the central canal. And this is how you bring nutrients and oxygen and remove waste product from a bone. You can see how vascular your bones are, right? So here we have central canal, perforating canals. We have lamellae and lamellae are layers of bony matrix. Um, those are concentric lamellae. Now over here on the surface, we have some circumferential lamellae, and then we have interstitial lamellae in between. So this, for example, and this, it will be our interstitial lamellae. Now, if you look at the osteon again in the more detail right here, you can see we have our lamellae um, that are, um, a matrix, and of course you have cells within this matrix. You have central canal with nerve, vein, and artery. And now if you magnify um, part of it even more, you will see cells. And those are mature cells, osteocytes. They inside this pocket of fluid, lacuna, and uh, you have this cytoplasmic extension of osteocytes called canaliculi. 
Now, why do we need all this stuff? Now, imagine you bring uh, oxygen and um, nutrients through the artery in a central canal. Now you have very hard matrix, but you need to deliver this oxygen and nutrients to cells further away from the central canal. Um, right, so diffusion would be difficult through this uh, mineralized matrix. So diffusion uh, and distribution of nutrients and oxygen will be through this canaliculi. So you can see how this canaliculi, they connect osteocytes together so the nutrients and oxygen can be delivered through canaliculi to individual cells and waste products can be removed from the cells to the veins, right? Uh, and if you look at the uh, spongy bone, they also have osteocytes, but um, um, you see, because we are inside, we don't have periosteum, we have endosteum that covers um, this trabeculae. We have osteoclast, we have osteocytes also inside the lacuna, and we do have uh, lamellae, uh, interstitial lamellae over here. Right, compared to our um, concentric lamellae and uh, circumferential lamellae of compact bone. Right, okay, so that's a compact bone. Um, here, a little bit a closer look to spongy bone. Um, cancellous bone is another name. So we also, as we mentioned, we have osteocytes in lacunae, we have lamellae. Um, so here, this part, uh, of uh, spongy bone called trabeculae. So you will find spongy bone a, in a um, epiphysis and um, in epiphysis, proximal distal epiphysis of uh, long bones and also in flat bones. Um, and um, trabeculae is how matrix is organized over there. And between the trabeculae, you have lots of red bone marrow, right? So that's a red bone marrow, red bone marrow, and those are matrix of the bone organized in trabeculae. It's appear random, but form along stress lines and makes your bone lighter um, and allow to store a red bone marrow for hematopoiesis, right? So here we can see our different cells. We, we can we see osteoblast over here osteoclasts, osteocytes, um, right? And then the trabecula itself uh, will be covered by endosteum. Um, we have what we call nutrient for ramen, right? So here's a nutrient for ramen that allow uh, nutrient artery and vein and nerves enter um, your bone. And it has like very, very rich supply um, uh, so you can see your blood vessels in a uh, medullary cavity, and we will have smaller blood vessels all through your compact bone uh, found within central canal and perforating canals. Um, and of course, nerves as well. Nerves sense pain and regulate blood supply. Um, now, your skeletal system are made of bone tissue mostly, but it's also made of cartilage. So we're gonna look at a cartilage that is a part of your um, skeletal system as well. A cartilage contain no blood vessels or nerves. It's a dense connective tissue. Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's not a dense, it's supporting connective tissue. And it's covered by dense connective tissues that's called perichondria. So instead of periosteum, we have perichondrium. And because your cartilage does not have blood supply or nerve supply, um, those are still living cells. Uh, they require nutrients and oxygen. They will get it from blood vessels that are found in perichondrium. So this is uh, perichondrium is rich in the blood vessels and um, nerves, right? So now from here, you get nutrients and oxygen by diffusion. Uh, and chondrocytes, uh, cells of a cartilage also located inside lacunae. Okay, so we actually have three type 
of uh, three types of cartilage, hyaline cartilage, um, most abandoned type, elastic and fiber cartilage. Highline provides support, flexibility, and uh, resilience. Uh, elastic, similar to Highland cartilage, contains uh, elastic fibers instead of collagen fibers. Highland and fiber cartilage, they both contain um, collagen fibers. Elastic contains elastic fibers. Fiber cartilage have great tensile strengths. Um, so let's see where this cartilage is located. We already mentioned that hyaline is the most abandoned. So you will find it in, in your larynx. There is only one uh, part of larynx, epiglottis, that is made of elastic cartilage. The rest of larynx, or what you call it, you call it voice box in everyday English, made of hyaline cartilage. We find it in the trachea in the primary bronchi, in the secondary bronchi. Actually, um, when bronchi became smaller and smaller and smaller, we have less and less cartilage, right? But that's highland cartilage. We also find it, uh, the, uh, your nose, right? So you have uh, nasal bones, and then the most uh, distal part of your nose is a uh, um, connective tissue. So right in the middle, you have highland cartilage. It's a cartilage that attaches ribs to the sternum. Uh, and this is a cartilage that you will find in epiphysis of your bones. So it's articulating cartilage is a type of hyaline cartilage. Plus um, the embryonic skeleton is made of hyaline cartilage and then it's ossifies became bone. Elastic cartilage pretty much only found in a pinna of your ear and epiglottis of the larynx and fiber cartilage, you will find it in a pubic symphysis uh, shown here in red. And this is where two hip bones uh, connect from this uh, joint and also in a knee joint. Meniscus uh, in, a, uh, in a knee joint is a fiber cartilage. Um, and we're gonna, uh, and, um, we're going to finish up this uh, lecture with uh, homeostatic imbalances of the skeletal system. And the first one, osteomalacia and rickets, uh, both are caused by uh, low uh, deficiency of calcium. So calcium salt not deposited. Um, and it can be easier because of the uh, low um, calcium in your diet or uh, vitamin D deficiency. Now, vitamin D is needed for calcium to be absorbed from your GI tract into your bloodstream. So even if you have a patient that uh, has normal amount of calcium in his or her diet, but if they have vitamin D deficiency, they just cannot uh, absorb that calcium. It cannot be deposited into their bones. Now, the difference between osteomalacia and rickets is that a rickets is a childhood disease and osteomalacia is disease of adult. Even you see the uh, causes and symptoms are similar. Well, not symptoms, I would say causes. N no deposition of calcium salt. Symptoms uh, will be different, however. Um, now, if child does not have enough calcium, um, uh, they, they will have bone deformities. Uh, deformi deformities uh, like uh, um, bowed legs. Um, now, remember we mentioned before that uh, without calcium, I will go back and show you that without calcium, right, without minerals, your bones are too flexible, right? They, um, they soft, too soft, too flexible. And when the baby is growing, uh, you increase the uh, pressure on the bones and this will bend the bones. So they are not straight. They have this bowed uh, appearance and it will be deformities in other bones as well, right? So when you, when you do not have enough calcium, um, you, you know, your bones are not getting, uh, um, so look, if you, your bones are not that fragile, 
because they're fragile without collagen. Without calcium, they are um, not strong enough. They have increased flexibility so they can bend uh, easy, easily, right? So that's um, the difference between, uh, for example, um, rickets and osteoporosis. In osteoporosis, we have fragile bones, the same with the Pagus uh, disease. So let's kind of finish up with our osteomalacian rickets. Uh, so calcium salts not deposited. If it's happened during childhood, uh, we will expect to see bone deformities um, when this child grows into adult, um, right? And uh, it can be uh, also caused because of deficiency of vitamin D. Now, osteoporosis, loss of bone mass, bone resorption outpaced deposit. So uh, we have lots of uh, uh, resorption of a bone, and we don't have enough deposition of a new bone matrix. So here um, you can see a spongy bone, uh, trabeculum of a normal bone, and osteoporotic bone. Um, bone became um, very um, fragile over here and has a lots of uh, like. Uh, what it say, um, some uh, like almost like a bubbles over here, right? Um, that of course, uh, that caused because we, um, we didn't deposit enough of bone matrix here. Um, so spongy bone of spine and neck of femur become more susceptible to fracture. So osteoporosis very often results in a bone fracture. Um, now, risk factors are lack of estrogen, and estrogen is female uh, sex hormone. So when uh, females go to menopause, level of extra, uh, estrogen drops, and this increases the risk of osteoporosis. Uh, so um, uh, uh, calcium or vitamin D deficiency again, so we do not deposit uh, maybe enough matrix. Uh, petite body form, immobility, low levels of um, thyroid stimulating hormone. Um, this is a hormone that stimulates your thyroid gland uh, or diabetes maladies, right? So that's osteoporosis. So I was looking for this word. Uh, so it's a porous bone, yeah, osteoporosis. So you have like little pores. I uh, would say pores are like holes. Um, so the uh, one of the um, uh, Characteristic of the osteoporosis, if you look at the patient, might be um, kyphosis or hunchback. Um, and this is because the bones of the vertebral column is a very susceptible, as it says here. The spine is very susceptible to osteoporosis. So now you see the regular uh, vertebra over here, right? And um, this is our um, vertebra that is damaged by osteoporosis. So we have resorption of bone and it changes the curvature of the spine. And if you look here at the x-ray, uh, you can see uh, two vertebra over here, right? This one and that. So this one over here and this one over here are osteoporotic and uh, this changes the curvature resulting in a hunchback. And you can see patient is elderly lady, but it doesn't mean that osteoporosis cannot affect younger patients. Uh, so treatment and prevention, calcium, vitamin D, fluoride supplements, increase weight bearing exercise through life. Sometimes they um, will uh, prescribe you estrogen or estrogen replacement therapy that will slow bone loss and some drugs that will increase bone mineral density and inhibit osteoclastic bone resorption. Now, um, just to sum up, um, you know, when we talk about different uh, bone cells, uh, we talk about, oh, let me go back over here. Uh, we talk about osteoblast and osteoclast. So osteoblast deposit your matrix and osteoclast resorbs it. So this activi activity of these two cells are 
precisely regulated by your uh, hormones and they are in balance. You cannot resorb more bones than you deposit, right? If you resorb lots of bones, so when activity of osteoclast increases, that will cause osteoporosis. That's why we have this porous bone. So we need um, inhibit osteoclast in, uh, activity, right? If you wanna help a patient with osteoporosis and you know those osteoclasts cause problem, how about we inhibit them and then osteoblast will deposit matrix and hopefully we can, uh, we can improve the condition. Um, that's what those drugs do. They inhibit osteoclast activity, right? Um, um, Paget disease, um, when we have excessive, uh, have fathered um, bone formation and breakdown, usually in spine, pelvis, femur, and skull. Um, so uh, we, we will see here deposition of extra bony matrix. So instead of uh, resorption, it seems like we have more bony matrix, but it's not, it's in a, um, uh, it, well, the ratio of spongy bone to the compact bone will be very high. So those bones that you, bone matrix that um, the patient deposited, uh, it has less minerals. So it's more spongy and porous bone compared to a normal compact bone. So pagetic bones that, again, usually affect the pelvis and femur and spine and skull, they have very high ratio of spongy to compact bone and reduced mineralization. So here we have problem with ratio of the spongy bone and compact bone. So you reduce the compact bone and you increase the amount of spongy bone and you also decrease mineralization. And you know what happened if you decrease mineralization, the bones became uh, very um, uh, less, uh, what to say, more, more flexible, but they cannot, um, uh, so less hard, yes? Because the calcium is for hardness, and resistance of compression. So you have more compression, you don't have enough uh, mineral salts, uh, right? So you cannot uh, handle this compression forces that much. And of course, those bones will break more easily. Uh, now, the unknown cause, we don't know why it happens. So possibly viral and treatment include calcitonin and um, by phosphonates, um, those chemicals that inhibit the digestion of bone by encouraging osteoclasts to undergo apoptosis. So again, we have this osteoclast that resorb your bone. So you take some um, uh, medication that will promote apoptosis or death of osteoclast, right? And calcitonin, what calcitonin does, calcitonin um, increase the calcium deposition into bone matrix, right? Okay, so that's it for this video lecture. We cover anatomy of uh, bone tissue or osseous tissue. And uh, thank you for watching and I hope it was helpful.